Hi, I'm Dr. Christiane Northrup, an OBGYN physician and authority on everything that can go right with your body. And I'm here to tell you how to use this knowledge to transform your health and truly flourish. Vibrant health is possible for everyone. And it's not just about preventing disease, though that is a big part of it. It's important to eat right, exercise, avoid toxins, be in touch with your emotions, have a strong connection to others, and have faith in something greater than yourself. In this video, I share with you my top seven health-enhancing habits to improve your health and truly flourish. Try grounding or earthing. This produces intriguing effects on your physiology and health, including lowering cellular inflammation, mediating better immune response, improving wound healing, prevention and treatment of chronic, inflammatory, and autoimmune diseases, and grounding is also associated with better sleep, reduced pain, and increased feelings of well-being. Science shows that direct physical contact with the vast supply of negative electrons on the surface of the Earth is what makes grounding so beneficial. The Earth has a mild negative charge to it. Over time, our bodies build up a positive charge. Direct contact with the Earth can even out this positive charge and return the body to a neutral state in which everything works better. Our modern lifestyle separates many people from such contact with the Earth. We wear rubber or plastic soled shoes, live indoors, and as a result, many people go years without directly touching the earth. Research suggests that this disconnect may be a major contributor to physiological dysfunction and just not feeling good. Grounding or earthing is easy. Simply put your bare feet on the earth and walk around barefoot for 20 minutes. Asphalt doesn't work. It has to be the ground or sand on a beach is perfect or just stand and sit on the ground. If you can't walk barefoot where you live, get out and touch the trees. The roots of a tree go deep into the earth and touching or hugging a tree will ground you. You can also walk on the sand like I told you at the beach. Meditate. There are many scientifically proven benefits of meditation. It promotes emotional health, reduces stress and anxiety, enhances self-awareness, improves concentration, it may reduce memory loss. It increases positive feelings and kindness. It helps break dependencies and addiction. It increases self-control and improves sleep. It helps control pain. The perception of pain is connected to your state of mind. It decreases blood pressure. There are many types of meditation. There's concentration meditation, where you focus your awareness on a chosen object, like a candle flame. You focus on a single point and then you follow your breath you can repeat a single word or mantra staring at a candle flame or at something else listening to a repetitive gong sound or counting mala beads when you notice your mind wandering you simply let your thoughts go back through this process your ability to concentrate over time improves there is mindfulness meditation mindfulness means just being present it encourages you to observe your thoughts as they drift through the mind. So if you find yourself thinking about something, you just say, thinking, thinking, thinking to yourself, and then go back to simply following your breath in and out. The intention is not to get involved with the thoughts or to judge them, but simply be aware of each mental note or sensory input as arises. So hearing, 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 feeling, 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 I practice Vipassana, a type of mindfulness meditation. It helps me to remember to be mindful throughout my day. Other styles of meditation include moving meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong, walking meditation, or metta loving kindness meditation. Buddhist monks focus directly on the cultivation of compassion. They envision negative events and recast them in a positive light by transforming them through compassion. My meditation routine is that I meditate about twice per day, most days, not all, for 15 minutes each time. Now I like to make it a ritual. So first I light incense and candles at my home altar. I have one in the living room, one in the bedroom. I decorate my altar with figures of Buddha, Mother Mary, Ganesh, Green Tara, and Kali. I don't pray to them per se. They're just symbols of the divine that I enjoy having on my altar. 
I put my hands in prayer position after lighting the candles and the incense and bow like this three times. Then I set a timer on my iPhone and ring a set of Tibetan bells. And once finished, after the 15 minutes and the timer goes off, I sit in the chair with my back straight and my hands in my lap. Right hand over left, thumbs touching. I simply follow my breath in out, sit. And when I find myself thinking about something, I just say to myself, thinking, thinking, thinking. If I'm distracted by sound, I say hearing, hearing, hearing. And then when the timer goes off and it's a nice little chime sound, I put my hands together in prayer and then send metta or blessings to myself or to whoever I think could use it or to the world at large. I then blow out the candles and we're done. Supplement with vitamin D. Vitamin D is necessary for the health of every cell in your body. It influences over 200 genes that can become impaired without adequate levels. Vitamin D deficiency has reached epidemic proportions. According to a number of studies, suboptimal levels of vitamin D can result in many diseases and conditions, including obesity, diabetes, hypertension, depression, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's disease, and cancer of the breast, prostate, or colon. The benefits of optimal vitamin D levels are many. Maintaining an optimal level of vitamin D can improve your immune system function and prevent many diseases, including colds and flu, cancer, and so-called autoimmune diseases. Plus, an optimal level of vitamin D can improve your mood, regulate insulin, support heart and lung function, protect your brain from toxic chemicals, and it may even help reduce chronic pain conditions. So, how do you get enough vitamin D? First of all, have your levels tested. It's a blood test. 40 to 80 nanograms per milliliter is optimal. Don't just go with what your doctor says is normal. You don't want normal, you want optimal. Grassroots Health sells test kits, and this is an organization that exists absolutely to make sure everyone understands the importance of vitamin D. The URL is grassrootshealth.net grassrootshealth.net. Get your vitamin D from sunlight whenever you can. You try to get 30 minutes of sunlight on your skin before 10 a.m. or after 3 to 4 p.m. and you're going to want to build up slowly with that. When I do this I place a cloth over my face and then I allow the sunlight to penetrate the rest of my body. If your vitamin D levels are low take a high quality supplement. It generally takes 10,000 international units daily for a month or so to get your vitamin D levels up to optimal. You're kind of pushing it into your cells. And then make sure to recheck your levels. You can also eat foods rich in vitamin D and those include cod, wild Alaskan salmon, tuna, codfish or herring, also eggs, and mataki mushrooms. These contain 786 IUs per serving of vitamin D. Take a break from media. Media can negatively affect your health. Watching television or being on social media allows you to get distracted by something that is happening somewhere else to other people. It can also negatively influence your spending habits, your mental health. It can cause anxiety, depression, loneliness, and the famous fear of missing out, or FOMO. It affects your self-esteem, your sleep, your attention span, and can lead to obesity if you're sitting around all day on <laughs> looking at your device. Studies show that reduced media use actually improves health. The University of Pennsylvania did a study that showed that people who limited their social media use to 30 minutes per day felt significantly better after a three-week period. They had reduced depression and loneliness, less FOMO, fear of missing out, and less anxiety. Another study shows that your use of Facebook could have demonstrable physical health effects. Users who compared themselves to others on a social media platform were more aware of physical ailments, including sleep issues, weight fluctuations, and muscle tension. And similar results were found for those experiencing anxiety and depression. There's some easy digital detox strategies. 
Be intentional. Like any other detox program, you need a plan. So define what you will give up, why, and for how long. For example, give up checking your email on your mobile device from Friday after work until the first thing Monday morning each week for a month. Set limits. Limit how many times you look at email. Limit minutes spent on social media, like 10 minutes per site per day. Clean up your friends list. Staying friended to people you haven't spoken to in decades is the equivalent of keeping up with the Joneses. Make a ritual out of your newfound program. Put your cell phone to bed each night. Create a special place for your phone as far away from your bedroom as possible. This frees up space to get your messages from your soul as you sleep. Don't look at your phone first thing in the morning. This has changed my life. Because if you do, it frames your day around a list of all the things you missed yesterday or need to do today or what's going on in the mainstream media that you can't do anything about. Instead, create a mindful morning ritual and check your messages afterward. Give it about an hour. If you use your cell phone as an alarm or you need it by your bed for other reasons, just be sure to turn off your Wi-Fi. Create permanent tech-free zones. This could be the bathroom, the dinner table, absolutely, restaurants, and then in bed. Sleep. Sleep problems are becoming more and more common, especially for women at midlife and beyond. Insufficient sleep makes you tired and irritable. It sets you up for being more accident prone, exhibiting decreased concentration, performing less efficiently at work, and having less motivation and more errors in judgment. Lack of sleep can have serious health consequences. It causes stress hormones to rise, that's cortisol and epinephrine, and over time, this can disrupt your hormonal balance and suppress your immune system. There are many things you can do to set yourself up for a good night's sleep. They start with avoiding caffeine and alcohol, getting regular exercise, eat a low glycemic diet, and don't eat before bed. Actually, we should all stop at about seven o'clock at night if possible, or leave three hours between your last meal and when you go to sleep. Sleep in a dark room. Try natural sleep aids, progesterone cream, peraria morifica, melatonin, magnesium, rescue remedy, they're just a few. Have a wind down ritual that might include a warm bath or some reading from a good novel or some poetry or affirmations. Turn off all electronics and your Wi-Fi at home at least one hour before bed. Sweat. Sweating is how your body thermoregulates. Your body produces sweat to cool itself down in hot weather or during exercise. Stress also triggers sweat. Other triggers include medication, infection or illness, eating spicy foods, having a higher body mass. Sweating is one of the most effective ways for your body to detox. It flushes out alcohol, cholesterol, and salt. When you sweat out salt, you retain calcium in your bones, you limit the amount of salt and calcium in urine, and you lower your risk of kidney stones. Studies show that sweating can help fight colds and other illnesses, including tuberculosis and other dangerous pathogens. It's called a dermicidin in the skin in sweat that fights pathogens. Researchers believe that these natural substances are more effective in the long term than traditional antibiotics because germs are not capable of quickly developing resistance to your own body's immune system. Sweating allows toxins to be released from your body through your sweat glands. A 2011 study published in the Journal of Archives of Environmental and Contamination Toxicology found that many toxic elements appeared to be excreted through sweat. Sweat also releases toxins that can clog pores and cause pimples. Your pores open up when you sweat and that releases the buildup inside them. So what are the best ways to work up a sweat? Exercise is an easy and effective way to sweat. Walk briskly, participate in a sport you love, hot yoga, hot Pilates, sauna. There are several different kinds of saunas, wood heated, gas stove heated, and infrared, which is powered by electricity. Infrared saunas send infrared rays deep into body tissues, which can improve immunity, lower blood pressure, and promote relaxation. But all types of saunas have great health benefits. The sweat lodges of the Native American ceremonies are a kind of a sweat bath, like a sauna where people sweat to heal. 
physically, mentally, and spiritually. A sweat lodge has that effect, plus there's a spiritual component. You can still find sweat lodges and take part in ceremonies. I like a hot Epsom salt bath. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. This is also very relaxing. I often do this before bed. Use divine love petitions. Divine love or the love of the creator is a powerful energy of unconditional caring that emanates throughout the universe from our creator. It is the most practical concrete way to help ourselves heal that I know of. Each of us is capable of sending and receiving divine love. So I want to teach you how to use a divine love petition. You simply direct your energy toward your healing by bringing the creator's love to you. Start by using petitions. These are healing statements created by the work of Robert Fritchie of the World Service Institute. So for more information, go to worldserviceinstitute.org. These divine love petitions give you the power to readjust your energy to maximize your health. For one symptom only, do the following. You clasp your palms together or like this, and then you say, I release to the creator from my entire being, all of my, and then you put in a specific symptom. So, and don't use a diagnosis unless you know it's that. So all of my, let's say, skin itching, or all of my headaches, or all of my joint pain. Use it that way. Okay, so let's just start that over again. I release to the creator from my entire being, all of my, put in the symptom, and ask that the creator heal all my damage from my, put in the symptom, automatically according to my spirit's intent and according to the creator's will. Then you draw in a deep breath through your nose like this, hold it and pulse it out through your nose like that. That activates the petition out into the world as though you're clearing your nostrils, then you unclasp your hands and then you see how that feels for a moment. Now, Robert Fritchie teaches that there are often pop-up symptoms. When you're clearing that symptom, others will come up. So for pop-ups, which are usually emotional and can arise when clearing the original symptoms, you do the following. Clasp your hands together and say, I release to the creator from my entire being all of my pop-ups associated with the symptom. Ask that the creator heal all damage from pop-ups associated with my put in the symptom, automatically, according to my spirit's intent and according to the creator's will. Then draw in a deep breath through your nose, pulse it out, and you're done. Now, this works for everyone because we are all made of energy. And just as our energy can manifest as disease, it can be influenced to heal. It's influenced by our experiences and our thoughts. And in addition to the healing statements, you need to add four cycle breathing every day. This clears the symptoms. This clears your energy field. So here's how you do that four cycle breathing. And again, this is the work of Robert Fritchie. You breathe in slowly through your nose to the count of five. So here we go. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Hold it for one, two, three, four, five, and then release slowly through the count of five and then hold your breath for five counts at the bottom. That's one cycle. Then you repeat that four times in one session. Do four sessions per day. And then to know if you're healed, and this is very interesting, you look deeply into your eyes in a mirror and you say, with my spirit and the angel's help, I send divine love through my body and ask the creator if my specific symptom, is completely healed in my soul, mind, and physical body? If the answer is yes from the creator, you can move on to another symptom. Now, what's, you can also use for this uh, kinesiology, muscle testing, or a pendulum. Uh, you're trying to increase the communication between you and your spirit, you and your inner being. Now, if the answer is no, when you look in the mirror, you do some deep breathing and check back in once a day. For more inspirational tips, visit my blog and exploredrnorthrop.com, where you will find wisdom for the body, mind, and spirit. Visit daily to discover the connection between your thoughts, beliefs, physical health, 
and life circumstances. And remember, you are in the driver's seat of your health and can make profound changes.